Hey guys, welcome to another I Talk Movies interview with the beautiful and talented Madeline Coughlin, freshly back in Los Angeles from Tribeca. We're going to talk to her, get the scoop on her brand new movie, Holidays. Stick with us in just a second. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's I Talk Movies. Guys, what's going on? Welcome to another I Talk Movies. I'm Ben Bateman, joined by Madeline Coughlin. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Round of applause for you. Welcome oh, back to you. LA. You just got back from Rebecca, right? Just got back, yeah. yeah. How was the flight? It was good. It was good. I was saying uh, I had a wedding to make, so I was glad everything went smoothly. Right. Yeah. Right. Wow. You, made the, you were able to make the wedding and everything? I was able to make it, yeah. Okay. Cool. Got up early. How was the festival? It was really cool. I it was my first time at Tribeca. Yeah. And my mom's from New York, so every time we would go back there it was kind of like seeing, you know, her old spaces. Right. So it was really cool to be there for something that was like just mine and be there with her though. Yeah, I've never been to that festival before. My sister lives in New York, so I go and sometimes see my niece Fifi. Oh nice. But, uh, <laughs> she's adorable. She's as cute as her name is. She's I mean, with that name, yeah. you can't be like a troll. Yeah, right, no, definitely. I mean, we'll see when she gets older, I guess. But <laughs> Um, I know I love New York. I, it's like the film festivals in New York have such a special feel to them. I feel like when people talk about them, it's always you know it's, it's not, it's nothing against LA film festivals, but no. there's something so arty about New York. Yeah, and yeah. being able to travel somewhere for a festival is really great too. You must have felt like a real full fledged movie star. I I did. Yeah. I did. You know I have to be somewhere yeah. very soon. So <laughs> that's so cool. Uh, so the movie Holidays opens today. Yes. Uh, and it's like a whole ensemble piece directed by a bunch of different directors. Um, do you want to talk about it or should I? You, you know, what, yeah, it's it's an anthology film, so it's about all it's about eight holidays they chose, and each director kind of puts their dark, unique spin on each segment. Yeah. So it's kind of like each holiday, but gone bad. Yeah, and you get to open the movie. You're the very first one. Yes. It's pretty cool. With Valentine's Day. Yeah. It's probably, I was just I was going to ask you, so do you think in your career as an actress you'll ever get to do something as dark as what happens at the end of your bit? I, Spoiler alert, guys! It's really dark. It's very dark. I mean, the it's funny because the role I did before that um, was on Castle, uh, okay. the show Castle, and yeah. it was also a dark character. Was it that bad? It, but it was <laughs> not that bad. But it was fairly close. Really? Yeah. Wow. So it was interesting. I, I was like, "What's the next one?" I yeah. don't know. It's just getting darker. <laughs> I guess so. We'll see. Yeah, some sort of like HBO black comedy or something. Maybe yeah, you could star in that. That'd be pretty cool. They're fun. I like those roles. Though yeah. I, they're interesting and they're they're cool to do. Horror movies are so interesting because I feel like they're so much more visual than anything else. You know, it's like as a kid, I can think of scary stories. I can think about horror movies, and those yeah. images are the ones that are just burned into your brain. They they rely so much on the shock of that, like just that beautiful painted image. So I feel like if I was ten years old and I watched Holidays, and I saw that scene, I feel like I'd never forget that scene. <laughs> so don't show Fifi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely do not show, show Fifi. Fifi. Yeah, I do not do well with horror films. Oh, you don't. All growing up, I was terrified. The the scariest movie I had seen was Haunted Mansion with Eddie Murphy. That's a terrifying. It's film. a scary <laughs> movie. I will stand by that for all the wrong reasons, though. <laughs> <laughs> and it just like scarred me. I was like, no, I, I can't watch anything uh, else. But then when I watched Dennis and Kevin, the directors, I watched their starry eyes, and I was like, okay, I can appreciate it differently now than when sure. I was younger. But so yeah. when you got the script for this, were you were you at all like, eh, I don't know if I, or were you just like all in? You're like, this is, I'm totally into this. I was I was really intrigued by it, and I. I mean, I loved the fact that I didn't speak. I thought that was really cool, and I, I was excited because it sounded like a real challenge too. Yeah. So yeah, I was I was kind of all in from the start. I was like, great, let's let's do this. Yeah, that's got to be a rare occasion where you get to do something like this. It's not just a music video with no lines. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you turn in a great performance. You're, it's a very memorable performance without any lines. Well, thank you. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Um, I also like the sort of like the sort of trippy like the mu those music sequences. Yeah. Kind of remind me of Drive for whatever reason. Did you ever yeah. see Drive? Yeah. No. It's got like it relies on the soundtrack a lot to sort of narrate the scenes and like it, there's every time that it would go to like the big happy music and the you know with the coach. Yeah, I thought it was great. Yeah, really switching true. between that like reality and then her reality. Yeah, it was, it was cool. I liked that too. Yeah, yeah. There's also like the like the weird creepy thing going on with the coach. Do you know yeah, what I mean? a couple of people mentioned that, and yeah. I guess because like working on set, it was just like fun and yeah, you know, right, right, it, right. it was different. <laughs> but I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> he is an older man with a wife. Yeah, right. Nah. 
You guys are like high school kids. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it wasn't overt, but it was definitely one of those things where I was watching. I was like, I guess that's just part of the horror genre. Everything is supposed to feel like a little bit off and a little bit weird. Yeah, so that's it adds true. To it. There's like something that you can't quite place exactly why, but you're like, mm, something's off. Yeah. So now I noticed when I was looking at your credits on IMDb that your very first role was Make It or Break It. It was. Yeah. So I auditioned for Make It or Break It, believe really? it Really? Years ago. Yeah. I remember. It's which it was like it's in Burbank. It's the one lot. I think it's on the left or on the right. I can't even remember. It's yeah. so long ago now. But uh, yeah, it was in like, like a little trailer. Does that sound right? No, you don't remember? I think so. I'm trying. I rem- I'm remembering that I it was really hot. So yeah, that probably sounds right. That sounds so probably correct. around here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's. I that was my first one of my first roles and I was a gymnast and cheerleader for oh, a long time. So you had, I was not. So but I, I didn't <laughs> even do the do any uh, stunts or anything in the show. It wasn't even that kind of role. What was so. your role in Make It or Break It? I was a girl who looked up to the the gymnasts and I was really excited to oh. just kind of like be around them, like following them around and starry eyed and all. Yeah, cool. exactly. But um, how long had you been at it, like doing the, the acting thing before you booked that? I I started acting when I was like five years old maybe because my mom kind of got me into it and I went to commercial auditions but it was always kind of like a hobby it was never something I was like fully fully into yeah and then when I got into middle school and started doing the school plays I realized like oh I actually really love this and then, you know, went in and out with, like, cheerleading and trying out other things, but I always kind of came back to it. Yeah, does, does like, your family have a background with it at all? Were your parents actors? My mom was an actress. Okay. And my dad is a journalist. Oh, cool. So kind of in, both in the entertainment world. Did you consider journalism ever? I did briefly. Yeah. But he wakes up at 4 a.m. Ooh. Um, because he has to be on New York time. Yeah. So that's... That's tough, and but he does love it, so I think right. that's that's kind of the key. You have to really love it because yep. it's a lot of work. Definitely, that's so cool. Wow, four a.m. That's intense. Yeah. I guess what times you go to bed? Like nine or something. He 10? tries to. Yeah. Right. But I have a little brother, and oh. he, my little brother, is like, no, it's time to play. Like time yeah. to hang out. He and he's a dad. He's got to yeah. make both things work. Do you have uh, multiple siblings or just the one? Just one. Just the one. Yeah. Do you tease him and stuff and you're yeah. hard on him? He's He loves basketball. Oh. So whenever he is watching a game right. or something, I like to kind of mess with the TV. By the time you're done with him, he's going to hate basketball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scarred him. <laughs> sure. Uh, that's awesome. That's great. So, all right. So, and you grew up in L.A.? I grew up in L.A., yeah. Uh, Born so, and raised. And so your dream of acting, it started with the middle school plays and things like that. So when you, how old were you when you like got the agent? You're like, all right, we're, we're doing this. We're all in. And it was, I would say I, I had an agent when I was really little, but I was different then and yeah, cuter and <laughs> easier to book things. Not tearing hearts out yet. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so in middle school, I kind of like got serious about it. Cool. Um, and so at that time, when you were first getting into it, well, not first getting into it, but first getting serious about it. Who were the people you were looking up to? Like, who were your idols? Who were the roles you can remember watching being, wow, that's that's what I want to do? I really love Marianne Cotillard. Oh, yeah. Um, I think she's amazing. And yeah. I that was, I always loved kind of the little things that I couldn't really explain why right. I why I like felt good about that. or mm. So I, I loved her when I was younger. And, she's ridiculously talented. Yeah, yeah and a lot insane. of kids didn't know who she was when yeah. that age because you were just watching like, you know, sitcoms and things like that. Yeah. So you weren't exposed to that. But I was glad my parents like showed me mm. quality films that I, I really could kind of find inspiration from. Yeah, La Vie en Rose, she's amazing. And mm-hmm. then uh, in Inception, she's particularly crazy. Yeah. She's got like, for, like frightening moments in that movie. Crazy Eyes. She does Crazy Eyes better than most. Yeah, and I mean, maybe I uh, took some of that with, <laughs> with all the <laughs> uh, Wow, that's cool. Alright, so so you do make it or break it, and then and now now you're in the world, like you got your first taste of it. Do you remember yeah. after you filmed that, walking out of it, just being like, this is so cool. This is what I want to do forever. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, and I also had a like container of craft services when I was walking out. I think we're not supposed to take it. I think it's definitely for the set, but I was like, this is great. Great to walking out. Did you keep it? Did you like freeze it so you could have it forever? No, ate no. it in the car right home. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Long drive. Should have asked like the craft master to sign something for you. Maybe. I know. Signed Oreo. I don't know. 
whatever, maybe. Uh, story, that's probably a story for another horror film. Ex- but, uh, <laughs> exactly. We'll see what happens. Um, that's so cool. All right. So so you walk out of it and you're just, you're kind of blown away. Now you flash forward to this and you've got a movie opening theatrically and you're, you're the first, you're the first story. I mean, it's hard to say in a movie, obviously, with so many people, it's hard to say like you're the star, but in a lot of ways you are. You're the first face on the screen. Um, so this is opening and it's such a big deal. Like, do, did you, could you even have imagined at that moment with your craft services on the way home, uh, just a few years later, that you're going to be in this position where you're in a film festival, you're on red carpets, you've got a movie opening in theaters? No, I mean, even filming this this movie, like, we really didn't know what would happen with it. Right. It was kind of like, okay, this is everyone's just really excited and passionate about it and doing it. And so it was kind of, it all came together really fast. And it was kind of almost, it was a little scary how fast things change and just kind of like yeah. seeing that switch because it didn't feel gradual. So it was... It was cool in that way, and I liked that. But it was also very like I don't, I couldn't. If you told me when I was, you know, Filming still in the craft service, yeah. I would have been like, "What? No, no way! <laughs> I got to go to gymnastics <laughs> class." Cool. All right. So, so all right. This is opening, and I noticed you have a couple other things on the docket. Looks like some stuff, some credits on IMDb. King Sod. What can you tell me about that? Well, that's not a project I'm attached to anymore. Oh no. No. Yeah. So I'm not doing that. But I am doing some videos with Radio Disney. Oh, cool. So that's kind Radio of a big Disney. switch. I used to listen to Radio Disney. <laughs> yeah, me too. 710, then yeah. 1110. It's good. Yeah. So I'll be doing some like fun improv-based videos for them, which will be cool because I like to write too. So I'll get to oh, be cool. writing and doing them. Have, do you have any experience with improv and like uh, any of UCB or any of those places? Yeah, I do Groundlings. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. Groundlings is great. Characters. Do you have lots, do you have a bag of characters you carry around with you? I, d- I like that. That's why I kind of enjoy Groundlings yeah. because it's so character based and it's fun to kind of see, see what happens in class yeah. and, and different, you know, shows, so. Who do you draw from? Like who, like, so do you, at SNL or any sketches, like who are the, who are like the women that you're like, that? she is so funny. Like how does she do that? Yeah. I mean, Kristen Wiig definitely. She's so good, right? It's hilarious. Are you super excited for Ghostbusters? Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah. I think it's going to be great. And I love Ghostbusters yeah. when I was little, like that, yeah, was, right. that was my movie. It's so it wasn't too scary for me no. to do it. <laughs> Marshmallow Man was pushing it. I yeah. was a little freaked. It was but intense. I was like, it's okay. Yeah. Um, and then Lisa Kudrow I love okay. just because yeah. that character that she kind of developed at Groundlings I yeah. think is great that she's it's taken her so far too right so. Yeah, I love I love those gals. Yeah, those those gals are great. It's cool. It's cool that we're in a time now. Obviously, Ghostbusters is like the tip of the iceberg with this, but where you have female cast members on a show like SNL that are big enough that they're willing to headline a movie like Ghostbusters with an all female cast. Yeah. You know, or you have you know Melissa McCarthy making all these uh, all these incredible comedies. Like she's kind of top of the heap right now a little bit. Amy yeah. Schumer. Like it's it's a big world right now for female comics. Yeah. There's something really powerful about being able to write your own yeah. stuff and then make it. Like it's you don't need to kind of be at the whim of someone else and what they want and what they see you as. You can kind of just write yourself the character you want to be and yeah. the story you want. So I really like that. Do you, so you write your own stuff, do you like put stuff on YouTube ever? Do you have any like fun uh, fun sketches or videos you've done? I did that for a bit with my friend. We kind of tried stuff out and, yeah. and s- see what works. And that's how we got got uh, attached to like Radio Disney because they saw some of the videos. And we're oh, like, cool. And we're like, we're like, okay, because I mean, you see videos on YouTube that have like millions right. of views and we did not have that. <laughs> it was like our sure. friends and family who yeah. were like, watch this video. Yeah. Um, and so it was kind of surprising, but yeah, it was. It's cool to create your own content, especially nowadays. It's, yeah, it's powerful. Um, when you're when you write, when you are interested in writing, like, what's your dream for things you'd write? Is it short, short form comedy, or do you have narrative stuff, longer pieces, pilot? What what is it? It's they're very like they vary a lot. Like I like writing poems and short stories, which are very. I mean, they're more along like the holidays, like darker, yeah, yeah, darker yeah. line. And then I do like writing sketches, and I haven't tried my hand at writing like a full on movie or pilot or anything like that. But it's, it's definitely in, something I'm interested in. It's intimidating. Yeah, it's a lot. 
It's a lot to take on. And also in LA when everyone's like, yeah, I'm just working on my pilot. And yeah, like, right. Okay, like, <laughs> I know. There's so many pilots. <laughs> it's funny too that, like, it's, that's the era we're in now. It used to be I'm working on my screenplay. Yeah. And now because of premium television is such a big deal and there's so much scripted content. Yeah. Everybody's writing a pilot. Or spec. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know. But I totally have my own ideas too. You got it? Know? Okay, we can talk later. <laughs> I think everybody's got their own yeah. ideas, right? Yeah. And that's what's cool is that you can just do that. Like, with YouTube and all of that, you can yeah. make it happen if you want. I do, for the Popcorn Talk Network, I do a show called Action Movie Anatomy. And it's oh, like yeah? me and my buddy, we get in here and we talk about the greatest action movies of all time. We have a whole like intellectual breakdown, all kinds of ridiculous stuff. But we've done 50 episodes now, uh, over an hour of like breaking down the action stars. And so we were just like, we need to write a ridiculous action movie. We have to do it. You have too much content now. Yeah. You, I mean, you have to do something with it. Right? That's what it feels like. Yeah. You, know, you write what you know, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you have to do it. So, uh Anyway, I, I noticed uh, you were on a red carpet just, just a couple weeks ago for, for BarkFest. Yeah. Is, do you have a love for dogs? I have three dogs. Do you? Yes. Oh, what are their names? Uh, Dorothy L slash Chachi. She has two names. L slash Chachi? L slash Chachi. When do you use L? When do you use Chachi? Chachi, it because her original name was L. Yeah. So we would use Chachi sparingly, but now it's mostly Chachi because oh. that's just more fun to you say. You just like it more. Yeah. It's not and, like a mad thing, happy thing. It's no, like, it used okay. to be, but now it's just like... You know, some L is mostly when she's bad. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And then Pluto, who's the one boy. How do Dorothy and Pluto feel about only having one name compared to L and Chachi having two? You know, Dorothy gets to swim a lot. Yeah. Because she, she's like a St. Bernard mix, and she is the funniest thing when she swims because she's like 120 pounds. Oh, wow. And should sink uh, and does not. Like, she, it's her favorite thing, so she gets that. And gets that attention, so I think she's she she bears with it. You were always a dog person, not cats. Never cats. Never, Never thought cats. about it. They scare me a bit. What about giant snakes? A hundred percent no. <laughs> <laughs> um, my dad is a little bit allergic to cats. Yeah. And I think I'm a little bit allergic too. Mm. So I used to kind of pretend that I wasn't when I was younger, just to spite him. Like, well, you are. I'm not. Like. That's just another weakness you have that I don't. And then I ended up being really allergic to cats. Well, lucky for you. I, see, I always liked cats, and I had, I had like, I adopted these pair of kittens with an ex-girlfriend. Okay. Broke up, had to find them a new home, and it was one of those things where they're very safe now, they're happy, but for the minute that I considered keeping them, yeah. I was like, I can't really be that guy with cats. <laughs> like, I can't really be that guy in my 20s who's got the pair of, like, matching orange kittens. And a story behind, behind it. Behind it, right, that belonged to me in my so such a like, statement. Not going to work out. Yeah, so I totally get that. I guess we stay away from cats for different reasons. Yep. Uh, yeah, well, BarkFest, that's, that, sound, that sounded fun. So were you just surrounded by other like famous people that love dogs? Yeah, that was pretty much what it was. But everyone was just pretty much focused on the dogs, too, which was really fun because usually when someone has a dog, that's what people focus on. So everyone was just really low to the ground, yeah. like petting dogs and seeing what was going on. Kind of so. like letting your fancy gowns, just like whatever, was getting hairy yeah. and dirty. Who cares? Let's just, yeah. And I mean, also, it's most of the dogs there were under 20 pounds. Right. Dorothy is the one I decided to bring because she's she's the most friendly. And she's was just towering over all of these little, like, chihuahuas. And oh. then there's Dorothy just walking around. It's pretty funny. You Could you, or is Dorothy, like, the right size where you could ride Dorothy? Like, if you needed to escape? or Yeah, you probably could. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, if you're the right, if you're the right size, I think she could, she could make the escape. And she'd take care of you. Yeah. Cool. Um, I, so in doing my research, I also found out that you had an article published about a vegan recipe at one time. Are you still a vegan? I did. <laughs> I am still a vegan. still a vegan? Yeah. And how does, so how does life in LA treat you as a vegan? It's pretty friendly here, it's right? It's so nice. It is yeah. nice here. And in New York as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I was a vegetarian since I was really little because my mom was. So yeah. she raised me as one and then I decided to go vegan and it was it was great. I mean, I I say I'm like a fun vegan though because I can still like I won't try and change entire plans or events oh, to okay. suit my You'll just preferences. Roll with it. I'll be like, "All right, yeah, you know, we'll we'll compromise." But yeah, it's nice in LA. Do you end up eating, like, if in those situations where you're being a fun vegan, do you end up eating just, like, weird stuff, just, like, a bowl of, like, beans or, like, a cucumber? I'll just I take a whole cucumber. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I eat, I've been known to eat whole bell peppers. Yeah. Like, just as, like, right. an apple. Um, but I also ha carry a little backpack around oh. everywhere. So there's, mo it's mostly snacks. My it's, like, <laughs> phone gum and snacks. 
Be careful that my mom is like that, except she's with tea. She has this one brand of English breakfast tea she likes, and I can swear to you, no matter where we go, anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, she'll do the same things. Do you have tea? Oh yeah, we have. What kinds do you have? They'll list them, and she's like, uh, no, no, thank you. Can you just bring me some hot water? And then she reaches in her purse and she gets her own tea out. What is the brand? Do you Bro, know? No, I don't even know. I just, it's just like it's my mom. We all just like shake our heads. Like, yeah, all right. Because <laughs> you know what's happening. Yeah, exactly. So you'll, yeah, you'll be seventy and you'll have like your little baggie of snacks. A hundred percent. I'm yeah. already so close to being there. Yeah. I love vintage clothing, so uh, most of the things I wear are like older than you know. Yeah. My grandmother. So when you so so like when you're doing red carpets and things like that, people are reaching out to give you clothes. You're gonna be like, nah, I got my own vintage stuff. I, my closet jet-rack. is pretty crazy. Is it? Yeah, there's a lot of weird things. Where do you but, like to shop? Uh, I like to shop at Play Clothes in Burbank. Okay. Um, where they have just it's like a dream, and their dressing rooms are like 1950s girls' oh, cool. bedrooms. They're really cool. So I love that. And then Sloan Vintage as well mm. in Burbank. Those are kind of my two my two spots. Cool. Super cool. Um, so what do you watch on television right now? Do you do watch TV? I mean, I'm assuming you do, right? I do. I do watch TV. I love Billions. Um, I haven't watched it. I've heard of it, though. It's really good. I love Damien Lewis. And okay. so I think, yeah, so that's amazing. Uh, Banshee. Yeah, I've heard Banshee's great. Yeah. I haven't watched it yet. But Banshee. I... If you like action, too, got to watch Banshee. I have a buddy who loves that show, and he sent me a bunch of clips. I saw okay. like, this one awesome scene where the main dude is fighting this like gigantic, I think it's like, this huge, huge, like bodyguard looking guy. Yeah. And he kicks his ass. Um, it looked awesome. It's I can't insane. Wait. Yeah. I mean, some of the stuff you, you're like, oh, should I even be seen? Yeah. Like, how do they even think of that as yeah. a way for someone to die? But yeah, it's a great, it's a great show. Yeah, I hear it's fantastic. Um, any, any CW stuff? Um, I, I was watching The Vampire Diaries for a long time. Yeah. And then I kind of just like, I don't know, I. I gravitated towards different shows. Outgrew it or something. Yeah, but I. Why are you? Are uh, you a CW fan? <laughs> <laughs> I just like the show The Hundred, but I was just gonna the keep 100. going down the line. Okay, I also like uh, Love on Netflix. Did okay. Did you see that? I haven't. It's good. Streaming content at this point is like so hard to keep up. Yeah. I try There's to. So much stuff. I try to do it. I have shows that I like, but I mean, uh, you know, I fall behind. I'm a big Walking Dead fan, though. You watch okay. Walking Dead? No. I don't. No. I don't. My it's brother good. and my dad love it. I, it seems like it's a dude's show. Yeah. I mean, I know, a lot of, I know a lot of women that like the show, but it does seem like a lot of guys like the show. Yeah, it's hunting zombies, I guess. Yeah, hunting zombies. It's a trend. The vampire trend is over. Were you part of the vampire trend? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loved Twilight. It, you saw all of them in theaters? I have a little poster that's slightly <laughs> hidden in my room. Yeah. Because at one point my room was covered and stuff. And yeah. so it's just kind of like, it's there for me. You know, it's like, that was a time, and I'm, I'm not denying it. Yeah. So it's there. But, yeah, I did go through a vampire face. The big Eddie Cohen fan. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, there was a, there was a few years back I, I played a vampire in a web series. It's the only time I ever got to play a vampire. I could see uh, that. Yeah, it was, it was fun, right? And his, his, uh, he was a guy who he actually wasn't a vampire. He pretended to be a vampire. His name was Steve, but he went by the name of Fatal. <laughs> and uh, everybody pronounced it fetal, though, instead of Fatal. <laughs> so it's spelled the same way. And uh, I got to wear, like, eye makeup and a big jacket. And, uh, and then I get exposed because my ex-girlfriend liked me because I pretended to be a vampire. Right. But then I just used it to get girls was the plot of the show. <laughs> And that that was, sounds really funny. That was my Twilight story. Yeah. <laughs> he just lied though. He just fibbed his way through. He it. fibbed his way through. <laughs> yeah, and then he's trying to he's trying to teach another character about how to fake like fam, fake vampirism. You know, use big words and talk like this and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny. It was good. I want to do some Googling later. Yeah, yeah. See if I can find Steve. <laughs> it's funny how the, the trends like that go, because we're in this post-apocalyptic trend right now. Yeah. Like Divergent and The Hunger Games and all that. I sort of wonder what the next one's going to be. I know. Zombies, maybe? What do you think? Like, I feel like zombies... Yeah, I mean, I guess with Walking Dead. Yeah, we're in it a little of, bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, werewolves, were, I feel like, have always been, like, Fringe. almost there. Yeah. yeah. So maybe maybe they'll make uh, a full on return and yeah. do a little taking over. You got to maybe write. You've got to write the werewolf pilot. I do. Yeah. But if my heart was always towards vampires, I don't know that you you might be able to tell that my heart's not in it. So your heart is a little <laughs> bit still towards vampires. It's like it's a touch. It'll like, never part go of it. away. Like it was. You grew. It was a formative year for you. The vampire yeah. years, right? Yeah. Would you play a vampire happily? Happily. happily. I mean, <laughs> I have, I need so much SPF anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, ha- I happily. How do you deal with the sun in LA? So, I'm also a pale person. I yeah. Just, do you, so, like, if I ch- deal with the sun, I just burn. 
right? But if I don't deal with the sun, then I just feel like I need to get sun. That's right. That's constantly the struggle here. Yeah, I mean, I have I think I've just embraced it. Yeah? I've been like, I'm pale, I need sunscreen, and yeah. then I have some freckles, which add maybe some sort of, I don't know, something. Do you enjoy the California outside? Do you hike or go to the beach a lot and that stuff? I like hiking. Um, my I like hiking with my dogs, so that's nice. Yeah. And doing that. But I don't like to go when it's too hot because right. then I'll burn. Yeah, but you'll just like incinerate. I'm not too into the beach. No? I don't like the cold water. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I'm completely on board with okay. you. I'm not a beach guy. I no. hike. I love hiking. But yeah. the beach for me, it's like the, it's the feeling of the sand I don't love. Yeah. And it's just like I feel like you get there and you're there for 30 minutes and you're like, okay, I think I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good now. Yeah, right. Exactly. And everyone else is like, no, it's fun. And I'm like... Well, my towel's wet now, and yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and, like, you kind of, like, with, you, like, beach days, it's like you sort of have to do the beach and then continue on the beach path. Yeah. Because now you're kind of dusty and you're dirty, right? Exactly. You can't, like, put on your, your nice clothes and go to the restaurant after. You still have to go shower and yeah. get ready. Yeah, and use those great outdoor showers. Those are great. <laughs> you're just those pressing. are great. You're yeah, like, yeah. Cool, so <laughs> two seconds of clean yeah. right now. I also have a problem with, like, so, because I'm obviously pale also, I started using the spray sunscreen, which yeah. is better, but, like, the normal sunscreen, it's, like, so, like, ah, I just hate it. I know. Right? It's You're very, out. like, matte. Yeah. Yeah, not a fan. I feel like it might work better, though. Yeah. Because it feels, like, worse. Yeah. I, think, I don't know. I think we're the only two people in L.A. that are, like, having a conversation about hating the beach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. So are you going to move to New York then someday because it's the weather's different or are you just sticking here? I do. I do like New York a lot. And yeah. I, I kind of – it does feel like another home when I go there. But I am also a wimp when it comes to the cold. Oh, okay, it's so very So I feel cold. like the winters would be definitely a challenge. Mm. But it's it really it really was nice being there and being able to take the subway places mm. and I mean that was cool not sitting in traffic. What was your favorite New York memory for this last trip? My favorite New York memory, I think it was probably like doing the red carpet yeah. and then when I got off, my mom uh, I was like oh I'm starving and my mom had like my mini backpack <laughs> and she took it out and I had like a little tofu dish in there and I was like just all right time to go to town. Nice. <laughs> Straight up movie star stuff. Yeah, the, real glamour. You got the post red carpet tofu. Yeah. That's your thing. <laughs> that was my thing. That's yeah. gonna be in the contract from now on. Exactly. Just my mom needs to be there at the end yeah. with the tofu. We're good. Yeah, right. That's like the shot when they're making your the biopic story. The agent's gonna be like, and she needs her tofu yeah. and slams the phone down. Yeah. Yeah, that's your story. That's great. Um, all right, so one director that you want to work with, who's who is it? I mean, J.J. Abrams. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's a cool answer. I, I love him, and I also I have this weird thing where I like the idea of playing something not human, too. Yeah. I think that'd be really cool, something mm. with, like, supernatural tendencies, but also trying to balance those, like, human emotions as well. Yeah. So I think that would be really cool, and, I mean, he's brilliant, so... Absolutely brilliant. I would really enjoy that. Did you? So, are you one of the people that was raised on Star Wars, or are you one of the bandwagon fans that now with the re-releases you got into Star Wars? Yeah, I mean, I was not raised on Star Wars. Okay. But I, with the re-release, it yeah. has been. It's been cool, and I, yeah, I don't, I don't pretend to be like, sure. no, I've seen it all, man. <laughs> yeah, it's totally fair. I think at this point, like the first Star Wars movie came out in 1977. Like, it's yeah, it's not that fair to just assume that every single person was raised to watch the Star Wars movie at every single age. Like, right. It, you know, it's kind of... Yeah. I went on the rides and everything when I was younger right. that they had. But, yeah, now I need to... Did you see Force Awakens, though? I did. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, good, 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 good. no. <laughs> did you love it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, it was... I think it's still cool for that to be kind of your first exposure to it as well. Well, a lot of people just say that he remade the first movie. Yeah. Which he kind of did, but it was amazing. Yeah. Like, are you, so are you a Daisy Ridley fan? Like, do you think she's pretty great? I think she's amazing. Yeah. And I love just how, like, she's just a powerhouse. <laughs> like, yeah. you just don't doubt her for a second. Yeah, I was totally in on that movie. I, I nerded out, about as hard as I've nerded out on anything, I nerded out on that movie. Yeah. Like, it was, like, kind of, like, losing it. Like, I definitely got, like, in one, in one of the screenings, I think I actually had tears happen at one point, because I'm just, like, such a fan. Yeah. Such a, such a big Star Wars fan. My friend saw it, I think, like, 11 times. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In theaters. Yeah. And he was, like, I could do it again. And, yeah. yeah, so. I had a friend pull the same move. The yeah. very same move. Um, <laughs> Abrams, so, so then, okay, he, he's not directing him anymore, but would you be in a Mission Impossible movie? Oh, yeah. Yeah? That'd be awesome. I love the, I mean, on a smaller scale, but for holidays, 
we had to do this scene where I jump off a diving board. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was one of those things where I was like, oh, this diving board looks great, like looks fine. And then you get up there and you're like, it's pr- it's like high. Yeah, and right. And then yeah. he was like, okay, and they're like backwards, and I was like, okay. Yeah. And so you have to get it at like just the right angle so that your chin doesn't hit the board yeah. when you're coming off, but also you don't go out of frame. Yeah. So that was cool, and I liked that, and like working with the diving instructor who had like a breathing apparatus down for the underwater stuff. Yeah. So I like. I mean, it would be cool to do some more stunts or kind of physical things I think that'd be fun would you go full cruise and like learn to hold your breath for seven minutes and like climb on you know 100 story buildings oh and- I'm really competitive <laughs> so just for me I may have to even yeah. if they'd be like Maddie like it's you really don't need to be like no guys just um I know but yeah. I need to <laughs> I don't think anybody can compete with that guy he's I know he's the only he, he is the only movie star in history who's like just like I'm no I'm just gonna learn to hold my breath for seven they're like they're like Tom this, you only need to be able to hold it for three even that's unnecessary we can use yeah. a stunt double and he's like no no I, I, I got this I got yeah. It. yeah I mean commitment for sure yeah that's insane um, speaking of getting pushed off the diving board what's your relationship like with uh, with your co-star in that film is she is, is she as awful in real life or is she a sweetheart she's very nice yeah. and she <laughs> brought me a cupcake um, oh. a vegan cupcake on the last day of filming that's sweet Yeah, she she's really cool Cool, and we bonded on the first day because we found out that we were both vegan. Yeah. And then I don't think she's vegan anymore, but at the time she was. So we like were at the craft service table, just like going to town on hummus and carrots. Yeah. And that was like fun because it was like, oh, okay, we're in this together. Yeah, right, right. Um, but she's great, and we hang out a lot. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, she plays. She plays a mean high school girl very well. She though. plays very mean. It was very. Con- it, I went there. It was, I was like, oh. <laughs> That right. kind of hurt, like, yeah. actually. But yeah, it was it was scary. You never get to see the revenge, the high school girl who actually murders the other girl with a box cutter moment. Right. Right. But you saw it in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> you, we went there. We went there, yeah. I guess very Carrie, Carrie-like. Yes. With the, the yeah, you're like a modern-day Carrie. So did you watch Carrie in preparation for this? I haven't seen Carrie. Oh, no. Mm-mm. No, I haven't seen it. But I... I really want to, and I didn't see the remake either. Right. So I think I need to start with the original, and then maybe move on to the to the remake as well. Well, you did a wonderful job with the role, despite I mean, because that's the, there's a lot of Carrie comparisons in the reviews I was reading. Yeah. So it's it's cool that you did it without it. Yeah. Um, so every because obviously all of the pieces were filmed uh, separately. You didn't interact with any of the other shorts, any of the other directors, the other sets. No, no. Yeah. So we kind of all met at uh, Tribeca. Yeah. Which was fun, and then we they were like, and then now you guys get to do photo shoots together so that was cool kind of seeing everyone and it was fun it was fun to to bond and see each other's segments and yeah talk about what scared us did you have a favorite segment i loved father's day yeah father's day was i thought it was just like it was a masterpiece it was really really amazing yeah and then the one that like haunts me is saint patrick's day for sure the giant snake yeah yeah because it's oh i just get like goosebumps when i think about that but i I mean all the segments were really cool i thought it was interesting they showed the snake's actual face yeah i didn't know if they were gonna go there no and he kind of looked friendly when i saw his face so i felt a little better about it yeah that was that one was frightening yeah yeah yeah, good stuff. I'm I'm traditionally not a big horror guy. Like not because I dislike it. I just like you know don't go out of my way to watch horror movies. Right. But like I said, they all, they always stick with me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if the folks want to find you, are you on social media? Are you? I am. I'm on Instagram, and you could go see my Alton Brown tweet on Twitter if you want. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm trying Twitter out. So I guess I'm getting back into Twitter. But I do have an Instagram. There's lots of pictures of my dogs. And uh, what is your Instagram for the folks find you? Uh, it's Maddie C seventeen. All right. M a d d y c one seven. Cool. And I hope you get back on Twitter. I tweet all kinds of silly things. I'll tag you left and right. Really? Yeah. Okay. We can tweet about Alton Brown if you want. Okay. <laughs> okay. If that's if that's a confirmation <laughs> and. Uh, you yeah. can get some tofu in there at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm in. <laughs> that'll be great. I'll, I'll find, like, fun vegan recipes that I'll tweet at you. Yeah, that's I love to cook, so do please you? do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you cook to mostly cook your own meals. Do you go out to eat for vegan restaurants at all? Yeah. Yeah, I like going out as well. Like, uh, do you love Cafe Gratitude? Love Cafe Gratitude. And gracias Madre. Mm-hmm. There's also a vegan sushi place called Shojin, huh. like, really deep in the heart of Little Tokyo. Really? In this mini mall. Huh. And it's amazing. It's It was my birthday place for a long time. Well, because I would imagine most, I mean, minus the fish, you can pretty much make all sushi vegan, right? Yeah, but they do, like, very cool 
kind of things with mushrooms. And oh, like really, in, not just like vegetarian sushi. Yeah. It's like really interesting sushi. Exactly. Okay, so you're not just like, sense. I'll get an avocado roll, I guess. Yeah, right. That's like the bane of any like vegetarian or vegan's existence is the sushi moment where it's like, I'm going to get the most boring <laughs> thing in the world for the hundredth time, yeah, the right? Yeah, cucumber roll, so like yeah. water and rice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're just like, no, 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 I'm here for the company. It's yeah. fun still. It's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. What, so if you like, so if that's not your birthday restaurant anymore, what is? Um, I've been, I tried Crossroads mm. um, earlier in the year, which is this very like, it's my dad says it doesn't feel like a vegan restaurant because uh, it seems very cool. He loves you very much. Yes, he, he does. <laughs> Um, but it, apparently it's like Beyonce was there. I oh. saw her there one time. So cool. it's, yeah, I guess it's been accepted by yeah. the, the cool folks. But it is, it's really delicious. Is there a celebrity that if you saw them, like you'd have that moment where you like, where, like I just, I know this is not cool, but I need to go say <laughs> something because they mean so much to me. I love Eddie Redmayne. Yeah? A lot, yeah. I also want to be him though too. Really? Which, yeah, like I love him, but I also am like, I could be you as well. Like, you're very, very cool. You want to, like, win the Oscar for being the woman that plays the man playing the woman? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I'm in, if you, if you know a guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I like I like Eddie Redmayne a lot. Well, he's also very handsome. I mean, he's basically a Burberry model that won an Oscar. He's very so. handsome. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't hurt. Yeah. You like the freckles and the pale complexion, all that. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess that's my thing. Um, yeah, I, I love that. On record, Eddie Redman. That's the thing. Um, well, uh, I think we I think we are running short on time, but cool. We're you. gonna end with that. So, yeah, that great, was good. great. That was the bumper. That was the bumper. I went to journalism school, so they yeah. taught us to. <laughs> uh, yeah. So thank you so much for coming by, and and the folks should check out your movie. Holiday is opening today. Yes. In theaters, and it's also available on VOD. If you guys feel lazy and you don't want to go to the theater, you can you can watch it from your computer. Yeah. And see uh, you do heinous acts at the beginning of the movie and enjoy. Be frightening. Yeah, real uh, scary stuff. Yeah, so thank you so much for coming by, guys, of and uh, and look us me. both up. Uh, you can find me also if you want to check it out. Ben Bateman Media on Twitter and Instagram, and uh, tweet about Alton Brown to yep. Maddie. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Bye, everybody. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, Christian Harloff, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.